But then also, like, I don't even, I'm not going to get into the, the details. That's, that's for Kate to do on her stream if she wants to. But, like, I mentioned last week how we've been trying to get our, well, my father-in-law, like, a, um, an, a medical appointment. Like, a doctor's appointment because he's been having some troubling neurological symptoms, okay? We finally um, convinced him on Sunday to go to the emergency room. On Sunday, he went to the emergency room, but we had we knew it was going to be like six hours, right? So we had him go first, and we're like, we'll meet you there. So he went first. He showed up at like 10 a.m. We drive all the way out to this hospital, like, you know, quite a, quite a distance away. And then Kate calls him and is like, where are you? And he said, oh, like I got checked in and they told me to wait anywhere, so I drove home. Kate was not very pleased with this turn of events. The reason we had to be there, and like this is very sent, I'm not bringing this up just to bring it up, it's very central to the issue. Um, like Kate's dad doesn't speak English well enough to probably handle what a doctor is gonna say, right? Because you know you need to follow their instructions very specifically. And you need to know like w what they're saying in order to relay it to the rest of the family. So that's why Kate had to be there. Um, and I was there just because, hey, it's the weekend. You spend time with your family, right? Anyway, so then we're like, well, what the heck? Come back. So he came back and then Kate talked to the... The people blocked me. Kate talked to the staff and the staff was like you know like we called his name like three times and he wasn't here so we pulled him off of the list and then she was like yeah he went home because he thought when you said wait anywhere like you didn't mean the 20 chairs in the he, he could he, he didn't think that it was pick a chair he thought that it was like oh i'll just it's it's like when you check into a restaurant and they're like it'll be 45 minutes like why don't you just take a couple walks around the block or whatever so luckily they got him in like right after that they were very i mean they basically let him skip the line which i'm i appreciate and then he got like good medical care and he got like a whoops i'm stupid i'm that was not smart um and he he got like scanned and blood tested and stuff he got a, a clean bill of health with some other you know like some some things that he can do at home to help minimize his symptoms and stuff like that, which was nice. But then there, I I do have to be honest. There was another part of me that was like, I'm glad my father-in-law is getting good medical attention. But I was also like, where was that shit when I needed it? Because <laughs> I was fucking dying and nobody cared at the hospital. They were like, what the hell are you doing here? Get out of here. You're 33 years old. And I was also like, you know what? Fuck this, dude. I'm never going to a Vancouver hospital if I got an emergency ever again. I'm driving out to New West. You can catch me at the New West Hospital. Next time I got a serious problem, go to the closest hospital. That's a foolish decision. I will be going to New Westminster where the, the population is 20% uh, of Vancouver's, but the infrastructure is 200% better. And I will, I will be going to New West. No, I would not cross the border and go to Bellingham, okay? I wouldn't be caught dead. Even if the hospital is probably Bellingham's number one tourist attraction. Because cause when people go to Bellingham, they're like, what is this horrible town? So they eat uh, cyanide and then go to the hospital and they're like, what the heck? If I'd known the hospital was this nice, I would I would have started my trip here instead of at the damn Tulip Festival Museum. Whatever the hell you got going on in Bellingham. Western Washington University's football stadium.